Hi, this is an introduction to the AI gaming website and coding platform. I'm going to show you how you can have your first game playing bot up and running in just a few clicks and how easy it is to start modifying that bot to add your own strategy and to compete on the site. I'm going to register for a new account to show you just how quick it is to run your first game playing bot. As soon as I register, my dashboard tells me I haven't played any games yet. If I click on the link to go to the online code editor, I'm presented with a development environment that has everything preloaded and ready for me to play my first game. Clicking the run button at the top right of the screen starts my bot running and that's it. Everything is in place to play a complete game. Now, it's pretty likely that I'm going to lose this game and that's because the template code that we've given you isn't very smart. It's up to you to add intelligence and strategy to the bot and to see how well you can do playing against our house bots and other players on the site. And that's how quick it is to have your own game playing bot running on the site. Creating bots to play our other games is just as quick, but I'm gonna concentrate on our traveling sales drone game for this introduction. So after that quick demonstration that created a brand new account, I'm going to switch over to an account that I've loaded with some examples so I can quickly show you how your bot works and how to play on the site. This is the code of your game playing bot. It's very simple because the website handles all of the complexity of making the games work and lets you concentrate on adding the decision making to your bot. That's why we can have so few lines of code to play the game, but still play a full visual game of traveling sales drone. The calculate move function is the equivalent of your main function in uh, other programs. It's called every time you need to make a move and at the end of it, you return the move that you've decided upon. There's help and reference information available in the information column of the editor here. You can refer to this after watching the video if you need some reminders of what is needed in your bot's code and how to play games against house bots or other users. So what do you need to know about in order to program a bot? Well, as I said, everything happens in the calculate move function. We can see in this calculate move function, it receives a parameter, the game state. This function also then returns a JSON object, which is the move that you want to make. So all in all, all that's required in the code of your bot is to receive that game state object, and then based on the information in that game state, you calculate a move to make and you return that move at the end of the function. So let me show you an example of the game state object that you receive for this traveling sales drone game. Here's a view then of the game state JSON object showing its structure and all of the fields it contains. A fuller description of each field can be found in the programmer's reference here. This is under the book icon here to the right of the editor window. The main field in the game state that you need to be concerned with for traveling sales drone is city cohorts. This is the list of X and Y coordinates that represents all of the locations that your bot needs to visit in order to play the game. You need to calculate the shortest route to visit every city in the list and get back to the beginning. When you've calculated a route that you want to use as your move, you format that move as a JSON object and return it at the end of the function. A fuller description of each field can be found in the programmer's reference here. This is under the book icon. We can see more information about understanding the map 
which is the list of coordinates that we need to visit. And further down, we can see more information about the move dictionary that we need to return from the calculate move function. So that's all of the structure of the code that runs your bot. And it's into this that you need to add a strategy. It's here that you need to make the decisions and add the intelligence to play the game as best you can. Instead of just creating a randomized list of cities to visit as the template code does, you need to implement a strategy that will reduce the length of the route that you take. To get you started with this, we've included a couple of functions that implement some simple techniques that you might use to improve the route. They also serve as an example of how you can work with the game state object and how you can process the list of cities. You don't have to use these functions, but you can use them as inspiration to get started with your own code. Now that we've seen everything that has to be in place for your bot to play a game, we can look at other things that make it easier to code a bot and to understand what's happening. The first thing here is debugging. Basically, any print statement within the code will display its information in the info display column of the editor. You can see here all of the print statements that were made the last time our bot ran. And if I run the bot again, you can see the debug information as it appears. Next, to remember data between calls to the calculate move function, we have to have a special object. This is because the calculate move function is called multiple times as the game plays. It's called every time you make a move. And each call to calculate move is a new program call and no data is remembered from the last time it ran. To get around this, we've created a special list object called persistent data that we maintain between calls to calculate move. So if you want to remember any data between moves, you have to use this persistent data Python list. There's an example of using persistent data in the templates calculate move function. And it's also explained further in the programmer's reference page here. OK, so the final thing that we need to know about for our bot development is giving our bots names. A bot name identifies your bot on leaderboards and in any rankings that we make. Each bot name has to be unique. So we have a bot management screen that allows you to create a new bot name. When you registered on the platform, we awarded some Satoshi to your account. When you create a bot, you can limit the amount of Satoshi that that bot has allocated to it. And this allows you to limit the amount of Satoshi that your bot can lose if you set it to play multiple games for high stakes. I play all of the games here for zero Satoshi or for very low stakes. So I'll allocate a thousand Satoshi to this new bot and I know I won't have to come back to it or worry about it stopping playing because it's run out of funds. I can then use this new bot name at the top of my bot code to identify it when it plays. So that's it for developing bots. To briefly recap, what we have discussed here comes down to three must haves that you should remember. One, you must have a calculate move function that receives the game state. Two, 
after making some decisions with the information in that game state, you must return a valid move object. And three, you must have a bot name to uniquely identify your code when it runs. Once you have some code for your bot and you want to play, you can select who your bot plays against and what style of game it plays. The first option is to play against one of our house bots. These house bots are always available and they vary in their skill levels. Start with housebot practice. This housebot doesn't make many intelligent decisions when it's playing, but it usually plays a better game than the template code that we've given you. Playing against housebot practice is a great way to get the hang of a game. Implementing very simple strategies is usually enough to beat this housebot. Housebot competition is what we use for our hackathons, mini hacks and online competitions. If you're at one of our events or competing in one of our organized competitions, you'll probably need to play against housebot competition. The second option, instead of playing against housebots, is to name the bot that you want to play against. If you know the name of your friend's bot, you can type it into the select opponent field. Now, when you click run, your bot will wait until your friend's bot starts running and it will only play a game with that bot. If your friend enters your bot name in the field before they click run, then you're guaranteed to only play against each other because the two bots will wait to match up with each other before they start playing. You can use this technique to play against yourself. If you have two bot names and you open two browser windows, then by putting the name of each bot in the select opponent field in each window, you're specifying that the bot in one browser window can only play the bot in the other browser window. The third and final option here is to select the anyone option. And this will match you up with any other user who has selected to play against anyone, but only if they're playing the same game type and they're playing the same style of game. It's also worth mentioning at this point that you have the option to set your bot to play another game when finished. This means that if you're happy with your code, you can leave it running to play multiple games. This is useful if you're playing in one of our competitions where you have to play at least so many games to qualify. You can set your bot to play the required number of games and then review how well it did. Another way of doing this is to set the exact number of games that you want your bot to play in the advanced settings here. This is useful if you're playing in one of our competitions where you have to play at least so many games to qualify. You can set your bot to play the required number of games and then review how well it did. You can also choose different styles of the game to play. For this game, we can see that if we select Housebot Practice, then there are some simple game styles that change the number of cities that you have to include in your calculated solution. Housebot Competition has many more game styles to choose from and include styles where you can stake some of the Satoshi that we awarded to your account when you registered. If you beat the house bot, you'll increase the Satoshi in your account. And if you lose, your balance will drop. You can also review games that you've played. If you close the editor window, you return to the dashboard page, which immediately shows you a replay of the last game you played. You can review all of the games that you've played by clicking the view all button underneath this game. From here, you can choose a game to review. And here you can step through the game move by move, or you can click the play button to run through the entire game. This is a good way to visually analyze the game that's being played and what your opponent was doing to help you refine your approach to winning the game. Also from the dashboard, 
you can access your account details here and upload a profile picture. A profile picture will help to identify yourself in leaderboards and rankings and competition results. That's it for this introduction. There are more features on the site for you to find and remember there are more games to play as well. They all follow a similar format to this one and once you become familiar with the online code editor and at least one game, it's easy to pick up the requirements for new games from our help files and programmers reference and from printing out debug information in the online code editor. Thanks for watching.